Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Central Depository Services India Limited Q3 FY23 Investor Call hosted by Access Capital Limited. Please note that CDSL does not provide specific revenue or earnings guidance. Anything said on this call which reflects CDSL's outlook for the future or which could be construed as forward-looking statements must be reviewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phones. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Praveen Agarwal from Access Capital Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Darwin. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the earnings call of CDSL Limited. Uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Nehal Vora, MD and CEO, along with his other team members uh, to be uh, answering your questions. I would request Mr. Nehal to share his initial highlights for the results, post which we'll open the floor for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. A very, very good afternoon and welcome everyone. I hope each of you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. Thank you for joining us today to discuss CDSL's financial... Aapan jya vikti sobat bule tahar, kya vikti ne aap la call hold. Thank you for joining us today to discuss CDSL's financial results for the third quarter of the financial year 22-23. As in previous quarters, we have posted a detailed financial presentation on our website for your reference. I'm joined by the CDSL Group's leadership team. This quarter, India further strengthened its retail participation in Indian capital markets. The registered investors are available with the stock exchanges stands at uh, 12 crores plus. The total number of DMAT accounts investors with CDSL as on 31st December 22 reached 7.78 crore DMAT accounts. The same number as on December 31st 21 was 5.56 crores, an increase of about 40%. The new milestones that India has achieved are due to a combination of two, two factors, growth of the digital online movement and the empowerment of investors, the convenience and ease of doing business. Digital services such as online account opening, EDIS, margin pledge and re-pledge mechanism, EAGM and e-voting, etc. in the hands of the investor in various corners of the country has translated into the growth story for the Indian retail investors. Having said that, we believe that this is just the beginning. Our primary focus remains on the continuous improvement of the financial ecosystem by making it more efficient and transparent. Speaking further on our performance, CDSL has been following its strategy to keep the business growing on a sustainable uh, foundation with a diversified revenue while investing in advanced technology and its people. For the quarter, a number of active accounts admitted with CDSL as on December 31st, 22 stood at 19,724, an increase of 12% from the number of active companies as on December 31st. 2021. Furthermore, the value of securities in DMAT custody with CDSL stood at 41 lakh crores as on 31st December 22, an increase of an increase of about uh, 11% from the value of securities held as of the previous year. Our ability to understand the requirements, innovate and build on technologies, and to deliver diversified experience. This continues to drive strong value for our stakeholders and investors. Before I hand it over to our CFO, Shing Girish Amisera, I would just like to say the growth of the Indian securities market is an extremely encouraging sign of India's potential. I also want to place our appreciation and gratitude to all our stakeholders, regulators, depository participants, investors, issuers, and other market participants and employees for their constant faith in us. So I would now hand it over to our CFO, Shikari Amasar. Thank you, Nail. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, on a year-on-year -year performance, the consolidated total income for the December 22 quarter is at 160.87 crore compared to 162.93 crore for the December 21 quarter. 
the net profit on a consolidated basis uh, for december 22 quarter is achieved at 74.737 crore is against 83.63 crores for the december 21 quarter uh, the total income on standalone basis on an year on year basis for uh, december 22 quarter is at 132.94 crore is against 121.55 crore for the december 21 quarter the net profit on a standalone basis uh, uh, on a year on year basis is at is at 62.71 crore as against 63.77 crore for the december 21 quarter now i shall request sunil alwaris to give an update about the operation of fully owned subsidiary cdsl ventures limited thank you over to you sunil uh, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the cdsl earnings call uh, i would like to present the results of cdsl for the quarter ended december 31st 2022 uh, on the uh, quarter ended December 22, the operational income was 23.07 crores as compared to 25.82 crores for the quarter ended September 22, which was a drop of about 10%. The other income was at 4.05 crores as against uh, 2.89 crores, which was a jump of 40%. The total income was at 27.13 crores as against 28.71 crores, uh, which was a slight drop of 5%. Total income, uh, total expenses dropped by 3% from 10.92 crores to 10.54 crores during this quarter. Uh, the profit before tax was 16.58 crores, has again 17.78 crores. And the profit after tax was 12.59 crores, has again 13.44 crores. Uh, during this period, uh, we saw a slight dip in the KYC creation from uh, 26 point, uh, sorry, 27.91 lakh to 26.86 lakh. Uh, the KYC fetch uh, uh, was at 5.76 crores from 65.06, uh, sorry, 5.58.76 lakhs from uh, 65.06 lakhs. Uh, so I'd like to pass on, uh, uh, I'd like to open the call for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phones. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Prakash Kapadia from Anived Portfolio Managers Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, two or three questions from my end. If I look at you know the subsidiary, the CKYC business, it's I think the third quarter in a row where the revenues have you know degrown for us. So. If you could give us some sense, what is uh, you know impacting revenues uh, because you know revenues are not so large, but still we are degrowing. That's the first question. Uh, second question is you know what kind of capex we've done for the current year and what is the likely capex for uh, next year. And lastly, you know out of the total DMAT account, if you could give us some sense of you know what are the unique. Uh, or you know uh, active demat accounts because you know we've grown rapidly in the last two two and a half years so if you could give us some color on that those were my three questions yeah so i'll first uh, answer your third question and i'll refer your second question to the cfo girish and the yeah. first question to sunil uh on the first and third question uh i think uh cvl's uh uh is, is, is a measure of the total volumes in the market and there has been some muted volumes over the last uh, few months uh, due to the basically the geopolitical issues the war like situation etc uh, and the market uh, basically the interest rates firming up etc um, in terms of uh, uh, we don't give out the number uh, numbers from a privacy point of view as to how much uh, is active inactive 
uh, it's kind of uh, given what has been given out is basically the total number of uh, in DMAT accounts. But it shows that uh, whatever is our uh, basically transaction based income has also uh, kind of uh, been in the about the same levels over the last uh, three, four months. So that kind of gives you a kind of an indication of uh, what has been basically the market uh, participation. Uh, I'll hand it over to Girish to answer the CAPEX question. So, uh, till uh, uh, December, we have incurred a capital expenditure of roughly 17 crore. And uh, this is in line with uh, our overall uh, budgetary approvals that we do every year. About future, I will not be able to make any comments about the future because uh, we don't do any forecasting. I will hand it over to Sunil to answer your next question. Yeah. Yeah, as uh, Nehal has just pointed out that the for the nine-month period, December 31st, 2022, the, uh, the, the markets have been very muted. So if you, uh, uh, the, the, Number of KYC records which are fetched or created are intrinsically linked to the number of DMAT and broking accounts which are valid. So, with the top drop in the DMAT and broking accounts, okay, it has also impacted the uh, KYC records. So, I hope that answers your question. Okay. No. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Homeyar from Kotak Mahindra. Please go ahead. Yes, hello. Uh, I have just one question for you. Uh, what is the number of delivered, I repeat, deliverable trades that take place on the CDSL account? Number, because that is what affects our revenue. So it, the number of accounts is inconsequential. What is the number of deliverable trades on a weekly or a monthly basis? You should look at uh, the exchange website on the delivery. No, exchange gives the volumes. And volumes, so it's not total volumes per share. For each share, it gives volumes. It doesn't give the total number of trades that take place. Because volume is also not, not this. Yeah, as you said, that you, you charge a particular fee on each trade, irrespective of the volume of the trade. So if a guy can sell one cross trade also, but the delivery that takes place is only one delivery, you will be charged, you'll be charged only one time fee. Yeah, so we don't uh, give that information out. But that. why is it, well, what is so private about number? I'm not asking per person. I I'm not asking per person. I'm asking the total number of trades that takes place. There's nothing private about it, yeah? What is, which movie is going to affect? I'm asking for total number of trades that takes place. I'm not asking for individual or this person or this share or that share. Total number of trades that takes place. We have uh, taken your point on record. There are certain regulatory frameworks which we are working for many years. So we will we will kind of assess it and examine whatever is possible. We can put it out. So you can at least share this with the shareholders. Yeah, this is a this is nothing to do with privacy. Yeah, it's just total number of trades that take place. Total number of trades have never been put out for so many years. But, anyway, but why? Have, I don't get it. I don't because that is what affects the revenue. Repeating your question so i told you that we will uh, we have taken a question down uh, you can uh, send us an email and we will send you a i also on that okay well, can you confirm the email address please it is there on our website you can take it from there okay thank you very much it was nice talking to you thank you the next question is from the line of prayesh jain from motila loswal please go ahead yeah hi everyone uh, uh, the question is more on, you know, the industry outlook and not specific to CDSL. Uh, so if you look at the kind of measures the regulator has implemented, you know, one, uh, not the, this is, this is not the regulation, but, you know, they uh, showcase that uh, only 10% of the active traders on SNO actually make, uh, make profits. And uh, while I know this does not impact your business, but it does impact the sentiments on the on the street, and uh, that will eventually re lead to an impact on uh, uh, the number of DMAT accounts that get opened. Uh, apart from that, you know, other regulations that have uh, come through. Uh, do you think that uh, you know the the pace of 
demat account addition uh, uh, is kind of you know it has slowed down obviously in the last say uh, uh, three to four quarters. Do you see any pickup that can happen, or what could trigger the pickup of uh, demat accounts again? So I think it's a good question, Prash. I think uh, uh, what the SEBI study from an industry outlook is kind of showcasing is that investors should be aware about their suitability norms and their objectives before uh, kind of really attempting in complex products like futures and options. Now, uh, this business is a business of faith and trust. So I think, uh, and it is a long-term play, which is more importantly, which creates wealth, typically. So I think the important thing is that as a market infrastructure institution, uh, our intent and our focus has been and will continue to be to ensure more and more transparency from an investor point of view. He or she should be able to do it himself or herself. So that brings in the trust factor. Also, it brings in basically, uh, basically the responsibility in terms of how one trades because it is your own wealth which is your uh, creating. And that's where I see uh, uh, the key driver is that when there is a clear uh, focus on ensuring transparency as well as uh, in, uh, basically allowing people to really understand more and more people will be able to participate in the securities market. Today we are at about six to seven percent of the population. We have an Indian, uh, we have a population which is very young. And hence, uh, it is really important that uh, we continue to embark on this, uh, in this reform journey of ensuring more and more uh, transparency in the way we conduct ourselves. And then that you leave it, uh, you know, more and more people are going to be joining into the fold, which is a hope and it is not a short term play or a quarter on quarter play, which we look at. It's more of a long term foundation, which we are looking at. So that's how I would really basically approach this question. Okay. Um, the other one is, you know, the Asba thing, what has been spoken about and uh, uh, that, you know, uh, Asba kind of thing to be implemented for the secondary markets. Uh, now that, you know, kind of takes away the float income of brokers. But does that, you know, really increase the uh, compliances from your end or uh, what is the kind of impact that CDSL will have to go through uh, in case that is implemented? So that is not really majorly applicable from a depository point of view. It's more mm -hmm. from the clearing corporation point of view because for funds. For so anyway, securities, there is a, a kind of a reform which has already been put in place where uh, the basically the investors' shares are blocked and only once the obligation translates into an obligation, uh, translates into a transfer, which happens. So mm -hmm. I think that's the general move in which we are moving towards. And hence, uh, this is something which is uh, uh, may not be uh, really applicable to CDSL as with the deposit range. Okay, okay. And last question, Neil, could you talk about um, what are the new avenues of revenue that you are looking at to garner, say, in the next three to five years? I know not forward, you don't give forward looking. Uh, statements, but uh, from a strategy perspective, if you could give us some thoughts as to you know what are the uh, aspects that you're looking at, uh, that would be helpful. So I think uh, CDSL as a generic, without giving into any forward-looking statements, and uh, I'm very conscious about that uh, mm. principle, is that we'll continue to embark upon our uh, journey of making it on technology. Uh, where we would like to focus more and more into uh, uh, technology and a more a B2C kind of a information flow where more and more investors are able to uh, observe, see their DMAT accounts, operate their DMAT accounts themselves. Uh, that's the entire ethos with which we are working. And uh, as more and more kind of basically, uh, basically asset classes are going to come into play 
there is going to be more and more uh, people who are joining into it and that is where our focus is going to continue to remain because that is what is basically the uh, basically the society would want that kind of uh, ease of doing this the transparency factor and the security factor these are some of the key aspects in which we would be working okay so i'll just keep in one more any thoughts on the insurance repository business as to how uh, how it has shaped up and so uh, what is the status from iida on this so i think it's uh, going through its own process of uh, basically the implementation it's a big reform the insurance companies are kind of uh, gearing up towards that uh, so any yeah. any data that you can share as to what is the size uh, that has happened uh, currently how many accounts are there in the industry and uh, what is the kind of number of policies that are covered in the ei so far so as of now there are no specific numbers you have put out on basically the basically the public domain uh it is going through the process of uh, uh the reforms in terms of uh, this entire move which is kind of uh, in happening but uh, basically ram kumar you want to add to anything to this okay. no sir you have covered it and only in the annual report we give the yearly figures as is required but otherwise generally we don't put it in the public public domain as far as means Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Chandra from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, sir, and uh, uh, no thanks for the opportunity. Um, so my first question is on the ransomware attack that we had. So can you please provide some more update on you know on you know, what actually went wrong there, and also you know like more from a technology perspective. so what kind of investments are required uh, in terms of how, in terms of, of our you know technology infrastructure so is it uh, you know a total revamp is required or uh, are we going to expand the technology team so this is the first question and second uh, is in terms of the investment in the office space that we have done uh, around you know capex of 163 crores 46000 square feet so you know it's a it's a you know like massive investment at least like two and a half times Uh, like bigger than the last office space we bought so what is the reason behind buying such a you know large office space and uh, also uh, in terms of uh, the impact in the other uh, you know stream that we had you know because of you know drop in e voting so if you can if you can quantify what is the exact drop in e voting that we had prior to last quarter thank you so on the first question on malware and we put out a detailed press release so uh, it was a cdsl securities operation system which was one of the first major expenses which uh, cdsl has uh, embarked upon in the new management team uh, we have uh, basically state of art so it itself basically detected this and uh, we see that this is a trend in one of the large companies also be the global companies also face these kind of basically outages the important thing is how far you're able to basically restore uh, your operations and cdsl was very quick in ensuring basically the restoration uh, the regulatory requirements on uh, filing of reports etc will continue to happen uh, in as and when we are supposed to do it and that's outside basically the public domain but the important thing is that cdsl has able to basically restore its uh, entire in operations uh, in terms of uh, after this episode has taken place we continue to embark upon there is no revamp required i think the system was sophisticated enough to basically detect it and we will continue to it's a kind of a science and an art uh, security so we continue to ensure that the top class uh, consultants and the people are part of our
Hello. Hello, operator. Uh, yes, sir. The music is from the line of the management. I have. Uh, should I retail the number, sir? Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, in Amit, uh, are you online? Yeah, yeah, I'm there, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, that's what I'm saying that uh, we will continue to embark upon the sophistication of our existing framework to come in line with what are the best international practices uh, cutting edge in terms of ensuring and uh, uh, that is going to be our uh, focus. Your second question on the property, uh, the intent is uh, we are embarking upon our uh, sophistication of technology and people so these are the two key aspects uh, these are some of the it has gone through a rigorous uh, uh, kind of uh, processing at the board level to assess what will be the requirements both from a regulatory side because the regulatory responsibility is also increasing the technology responsibility is increasing the subsidiaries are growing and the important thing is to have a one CDSL as a focus where all subsidiaries are uh, working within uh, the same building so that there is a kind of built-in integration which is continuing to really embark upon. And the third question, I'll ask the CFO Girish to answer that question. Hi, Amit. So uh, if, you if you look at our uh, historical data, uh, traditionally e-voting business has been on maximum uh, uh, in the second quarter. So second quarter we had a clocked income of 14.18 crore. However, in this quarter also we have achieved an income of 3.78 crore. I hope this answers your question. Yes, sir. Thank you. I will be back in the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhukar Lada from Nuvama. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I wanted to get a sense of, uh, you know, what were the KRA records at the end of the period and uh, how many got created and what were the fetches. You used to give this number on calls. So uh, it will be good to sort of uh, get this uh, detail right now. I don't think we used to give these numbers as per my recollection, and I have confirmed that with my CFO also. Sunil also, I don't think I can confirm. I don't think we No, used you, uh, you used to uh, say it on the calls uh, uh, to, to questions. I, I think Sunil used to give these numbers. I have the previous year's numbers with okay. me. Sunil, I'll just ask Sunil to respond to this yeah so for the nine month period no do we or uh, do we give these numbers out I mean that is the question first it's not there in the public domain yeah so do we give these numbers that's what is a oh, in the previous call we had given so then uh, we should uh, put it out if you are giving it on the call going forward we should put out these numbers then so yeah, you can, can have it now. for the quarter end. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, for the nine months, uh, FY23, we did uh, 85.72 lakh records, as against 1.11 crore last year. And from the fetch side, we did 1.9 crore, as against 2.51 crore last year. So, in both cases, it was a dip of about 23 to 24. Understood. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, because of, uh, I understand the KYC business, uh, uh, let me, if I recollect correctly, we make around 20 rupees per record creation and about 35 rupees per, per fetch. Has there been any change in the economics? That's uh, part one of the question. Part two was also the adoption of Aadhaar-based KYC could actually uh, impact these uh, revenues. So any comments around that uh, uh, will be helpful in terms of where the competing technology is and whether that will be used uh, in financial services. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
uh, two things. One is the Aadhaar based uh, technology is al already being used by most intermediaries. And after the KYC is fetched from Aadhaar, okay, the record is then uploaded in the KRA. So in a way, it has actually facilitated the online journey of customers and has increased the number of KYC records in the KRA. Okay, I, I can get your first question, sorry. Uh, the, uh, so, uh, so I understand in that Aadhaar based technology, uh, uh, the, the realizations could be lower from the current uh, realization. Has, has that changed? Uh, this will be a more futuristic question. So I would uh, recommend that let's uh, kind of uh, remain because we don't give a future outlook. Uh, it will have to be seen how it will pan out uh, as we move forward. But uh, what we'll be able to kind of uh, focus on is what is happening as on today. Understood. And currently, we are still realizing uh, 20 rupees per record created and about 35 rupees for fetches. Is that understanding correct? See, that understanding is correct so far as our rack rates are concerned. But there are certain Understood. Understood. Yes, yes. Understood, sir. So uh, that's helpful. Uh, thanks a lot. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanket Godha from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, so, uh, I have uh, two questions and one, uh, a couple of data keeping points. So, so on, uh, first one is on insurance repository. So, so I just wanted to understand uh, or, or you, if you can give a color uh, whether whether we have already started in intense discussions with the insurance companies and uh, and 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 uh, what charges uh, we are we are requiring uh, we are charging and and whether whether entire industry is thinking to outsource it to the repository uh, or or they intend to do it in house and 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 where the charges will settle so, so, so just just if you can give a little bit of color uh, how how it will play out in uh, since uh, from from next fiscal year that's that's the uh, uh, first question uh, on insurance repository and and second question is is with respect to this kyc itself uh, yesterday in the budget or, or day before in the budget uh, uh, finance ministry has spoken about dg lockers or the public infrastructure and kyc linkage so, so just wanted to understand whether this will have an any impact on the current uh, uh, CVL uh, uh, KRA business, uh, or, or or how it will compete with the uh, the KYC income. So both questions, I think, are more futuristic. Insurance, something which will have to wait and watch how it will play out uh, on how they will be uh, kind of putting it, where the charges will basically uh, stabilize, etc. Uh, the teams are going ahead with uh, their normal process of uh, reaching out to the insurance companies, and we'll have to wait and watch. Uh, but, sir, uh, sir, but, but sir, on this one, just just a small follow-up: uh, uh, Is there uh, any any uh, pushback from insurance companies that they want to do it in-house, or or they are okay to outsource it to to the repositories? It's difficult to kind of gauge at this stage because they are all going through their own process of. Uh, uh, kind of really assessing the situation. But uh, the regulations require it to have a kind of an account. So I don't see that. Uh, I think the rules are pretty clear as to mm -hmm. how it needs to be done. So they'll have to follow that. Uh, and sir, uh, 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 the reason I'm asking is that even even the KYC thing has gone live from first first April. Uh, sorry, first Jan for 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 the insurance every insurance product. So so any any uh, color there because because it has already gone live. Yeah, that is for the new, uh, and that also is going through a process of uh, yeah, basically the evolution. It's for the new insurance companies, uh, the new insurance policies. Yeah. Uh, uh, so. Again, that's going through its own process of how it will basically stabilize because each one has its own way of ensuring its technology also is in compliance with all mm -hmm. these requirements. As regards okay. your second question on the uh, KYC also, this will have to be just an announcement made. There is no formal uh, uh, process. And I think there are certain nuances and value adds which the KRA as a process invo is involved in. And I think those are expected to continue. I don't think there is going to be any 
change which is expected at this stage. Got it, sir. Uh, and and uh, probably a few data keeping questions. Uh, so, uh, can, if you can let us know the pledge income, uh, annualized income broken down into listed and unlisted, and uh, cash cash income. And and if you can provide data provision also, it will be great because I think we used to disclose all these numbers in the past. So uh, the income from unlisted company in the quarter is uh, at 89 lakhs, and for nine months it is at uh, 3.66 crore. Uh, with respect to margin pledge, the income for this quarter is 3.27 crore. And uh, okay. third, third, you had said about what? Ca cash income. Cash in cash is at uh, five crore. Uh, and finally, data provision? Data provision is at 3 crore. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. That's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The next question is from Pranav Machala from Reliance General Insurance. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, yes, yes, go ahead. You're audible. Yeah, sir, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, two quick questions. Uh, first, the question that I had is, sir, if you could give any guidance on the capex that we intend to do in terms of the technology cost for forthcoming year. Uh, and the... Yeah, for now, normally we don't give any future outlook, so uh, that we will not able to give any specifics. Okay, sir, because we've talked quite a lot about the technology, so it will be much more helpful to understand or if you could give the management could give a retrospective guidance or a ballpark percentage of top line, which could be earmarked towards the technology cost in terms of an investment. So we will not be able to give any specific numbers. I can, as I told you, we continue to ensure that technology is going to be our key driver in terms of our main business. But as okay. a policy, we don't give any future outlook. Okay, so my second question is, in this financial year, as we speak by, have we revised or has there been any revision in terms of prices in transaction charges or annual issuer charges? No, not yet. And in FY24, since this is being duopolistic, are we envisaging any upward revision in either of these uh, charges? That will be driven by basically the regulator, so we'll have to see how that pans out, and that's again futuristic, so we'll have to wait. So, so have we taken it up with the regulator? Have we put in an application for for upward revision in 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 the charges for the same? Yeah, again, there are various points. It is uh, I don't think uh, these are really put out in basically the public domain on our conversation with the with the regulator. But all as I can say is as, as and when, if at all it is approved, it will be put out in the public domain. Fair point. Fair point, sir. Thank you. That's it for me, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Paresh G. Sangani from Club Millionaire. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, Nehal. Good afternoon. Yeah. The first question is, you know, we have seen a big jump in the employee cost, almost over more than 30% uh, on a uh, YOY basis. Wanted to know how many people have been added and in which divisions or functions have these people been assigned to? Yeah, so I, I'll, uh, we, uh, we uh, generally we don't give the count out, but I am saying uh, we, uh, uh, it's, the areas which are going to be in focus is basically the regulatory area because they are going to be a regulatory focus. Technology uh, are the two key areas and obviously overall basically the operations also as our number of EMAT accounts and our size of the operations grow. So these are the three principal areas in which uh, we are uh, growing. However, there is an overall increase in our operations, so the ancillary support functions will also continue to see a growth. Okay, noted. And uh, Neil, has there been any increase in our repository business in terms of people being added over there? Because KYC just come into uh, being just since the first of Jan, and even digitization announcement have come, say from November. So, have we added headcount over there, and how are we well positioned on that? We are going through our own internal process of kind of, uh, it's a continuous process of basically assessing the requirements uh, as per the business opportunities. 
and uh, that is again futuristic so we will have to wait and watch how that pans out but uh, we are fully aware of the business opportunity and will continue to kind of embark upon putting the right kind of people there uh, to ensure that we are able to really uh, explore and execute uh, basically the business opportunity which is there uh yeah i understand i don't want any futuristic guidance what i'm referring to is the expenses that have been incurred for the past quarter you know in terms of employees or manpower that you added on the insurance side i mean is there a headcount or you know is there It a big jump in a process of uh, recruitment etc so that is something okay. in process so okay and generally you know it's been now almost 8 years plus right that we have not had a price increase i know discussions have been on and sometimes not been on as well what is the status on it because you know if you see the costs have actually gone up in terms of technology as you mentioned regulatory costs have gone up compliance costs have gone up operational technology manpower costs have gone up right with that why these salaries so what is the status on that so so again there are two ways of looking at it on one side there are certain costs which grow up, grow on a certain year on year basis or after a period of time sometimes the costs are even expected to go down that is what is the expectation so where this particular thing will fall we'll have to wait and watch uh, the important thing is that uh, as a ethos again and as a focus is that we want to have as many more people joining our fold make it easier for them because uh, any sales is a function of two aspects one is the rate which are people who are joining the volume of business so mm-hmm. uh, what the rate is basically what uh, basically the regulator will decide and it will take into consideration a lot of points before it moves forward but at least where the volume is something we want to create that value uh, kind of proposition so that more and more people can join us sure has there been any discussions with the uh, sebi on this uh, in terms of uh, giving a price hike sorry pradesh i'll have to kind of uh, you know we don't discuss our regulatory conversations uh, in basically the public domain so what really is request you that uh, we can keep that uh, Okay, uh, that's it, Neil, from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. The next question is from the line of uh, Rabinder Singh Sikand from GSS. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my question is uh, relating to the uh, the malware attack. I think somebody had already. Uh, brought this subject up How, was any data compromised and considering that you are doing uh, kyc isn't it uh, something that should be on um, uh, updates given to uh, uh, shareholders and the public uh, more frequently than just a one time press release so it is going through its own process of uh, the regulatory interactions at a suitable time we will be uh, uh we giving out whatever is required to be done but it is a process of certain amount of confidentiality which has been which has to be maintained from the overall uh, scheme of things and that regulatory uh, kind of regulatory interactions which we are going to um i would like to kind of really assure you that the highest level of security has been imposed and uh, there will not be any situation to really think about that there is any compromise which is uh, which would be uh, which has happened in terms of in that but we continue to work on ensuring that the security is at its highest level i would request you to that we are uh, going through a regulatory process and in terms of once at an appropriate time we will be able to give that out and a second uh, follow up question would be uh, how do you benchmark the technology that you're using uh, do you compare it to what is uh, used and what is comparable in uh, say the united states and europe um, more developed economies are, are you benchmarking it against something or is there an os uh, that you're using and secondly your password uh, considering you say that you are you know you're investing heavily in technology 
have you seen that the password that you use is only alphanumeric it doesn't allow you to use special characters isn't that uh, something that you should be concerned about or has no, no one looked into this oh so we will uh, uh, take that because there are multiple ways of security password is just one angle there are other ways in which it is being done but however uh, i'll ask my security teams to look at that uh, going forward uh, i'm sure there uh, we have other mechanisms in which also the things have been made secure uh, no. in terms of how we benchmark ourselves uh, india is at a very unique position where we have a more most of the western world is uh, on the depository space is on a b2b business there is no client level visibility which is given mm -hmm. uh, it's the intermediary which gives the visibility to the client uh, whilst uh, in india we have more of a uh, uh, where the customer is able to view his or her dmat account directly with the uh, dsl and mm -hmm. then in that sense we are far superior even basically the authorization of one time passwords etc directly happens with the customer with cdsl uh, which is kind of unique to the world in terms of basically the security no but are we are we using uh, uh, an os that is globally acceptable is this a uh, home developed uh, operating system is it updated because uh, the app or the website never asks for any updates any security updates ever i've never as a user i've never ever had to update my uh, the website or the app in, in uh, and i use an i use an apple phone on the apple there's no update on the uh, on the app so uh, what is the os that we're using uh, that you're using for this and uh, uh, the password is the only access that a customer has to enter the site uh, what is the uh, when you said multiple Uh, act, uh, multiple means of securing the account. The password is the only uh, sec uh, uh, entry into the website into a customer's this thing. What are the multiple uh, points that you are referring to? So whenever there is a transaction which has to be conducted, there is a mm -hmm. transaction pin and there is a one-time password. Correct. Mandatorily, mm -hmm. which is the additional forms of security, and that mm -hmm. keeps on changing. Uh, mm -hmm. this is uh, it goes to a two factor in authentication besides that over and above that every uh, transaction is mapped with the obligation with the clearing corporation also at an individual level before the mm -hmm. transfer takes place mm -hmm. so that's why there are multiple forms of uh, checks which are taken place before these things move forward even on basic the pledge mechanism the basically the margin pledge mechanism also there is a one time password Uh, to be input it before the transaction moves forward so it is not just it is a password but there are various modes in which the transaction is getting secure okay but uh, i don't know if anyone is actually following your twitter feed there are so many complaints every day on the lack of response uh, to customer queries has anyone audited uh, how your customer uh representatives actually interact with the individual customers is there any audit on that i mean do you actually check uh um, you know uh, dispute resolution because if you look at the twitter feed it is full of people uh, complaining and comparing i know it's not a good thing but uh, one you need to be aware the people comparing your uh, C, uh comparing cdsl with nsdl in terms of response in terms of uh, customer um, uh, query resolution uh, is anyone auditing this and has this been a, uh, has this ever been discussed by anybody yes this is uh, closely being monitored and i as far as my uh, review and reporting goes uh, most of the queries have been satisfactorily resolved and replied to in fact uh, the continuous uh, growth in dmat accounts uh, of the new dmat accounts testifies that this is something which the market at large has been fairly fairly satisfied with mm, yeah on the last point you made a comment saying that uh, you know we you you have um, in your opening remarks uh, uh, working towards uh, uh, you know building wealth for Uh, investors uh, market cap has eroded by nearly 70% in the last year or um, about a year year and a half how what value are you creating 
see, I think uh, the point is that it's important to ensure we're in a market infrastructure institutional business. And this is a long-term play. We are creating the infrastructure for the country as a whole. And mm -hmm. these are the lines of business which is, has to be seen in that perspective and in that context. Mm -hmm. Rather than on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. No, this is over a year, right? I mean, we... we... You'll just hear me out. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. You will need to see what has been the market conditions at large. But there are basically the uh, other extraneous factors which have taken place, uh, be it uh, basically the geopolitical issues, the interest issues, which have really impacted the market. So I think every stock is kind of uh, being mapped to the overall market conditions and not in its basically isolation. The important thing as a focus for a market infrastructure institution is to ensure that the company is focusing on building the right building blocks so that as and when the business opportunity is growing, the, it has the right toolkits within itself to ensure that that growth is basically, uh, basically executed. Thank you. I, I take this with that you have answered I'm, because uh, I'm a very, very long-term investor. I've been invested in the stock from, from the time of the IPO. But um, my only, um, uh, only request is that the security aspect be, um, you know, strengthened and we get a little more detail on what exactly we're using. I mean, is it ab absolutely safe uh, for, for, you know, we don't want to uh, be taken by uh, you don't want to be blindsided by another malware attack or something that we read about only in the press. Uh, we, and uh, or, uh, the other thing is that please, whoever is handling your Twitter feed, please hand it, uh, handle it with a little more sensitivity because the um, responses just do not uh, match up to um, what, what you've just uh, said uh, over the telephone. It just does not uh, match up. So some, if someone uh, deals with this uh, a little more, uh, with a little more uh, eye to detail, it would be nice. Anyway, thank you so much for your time, Nehal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone phones at this time. The next question is from the line of Prithvish Uppal from Asian Market Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, sir, I just wanted to know uh, from a data uh, keeping perspective, what is the uh, split of annual issuer charges from the slab and folio uh, based method? So that's the first. And uh, again, in terms of annual issuer charges, what would be the split between uh, listed and unlisted? Because this is something we used to provide earlier. The first charge we don't provide in the public domain. I'll ask the uh, second one. Uh, so second, uh, the split, the unlisted, the income from unlisted is at uh, 88.65 uh, lakhs during this quarter and yeah. 3.66 crore for the nine months. Okay, because uh, I think one of your uh, Q119 calls you've given the split between the slab and folio based. So, or if you could just give any color of it, like uh, your total income, which uh, how the growth has been from either the slab, from both the slab and folio based, and and as a mix, how that would have uh, possibly moved as well. So, if we look at our annual issuer income uh, in if you look at last year, it was at uh, uh, 29 crores. However, this quarter, if you look at our income, it is at 47 crores. So it has moved positively, and uh, the increase is almost 57 percent. So I was asking more from perspective of uh, how much the growth would have been driven from folios and how much would have been driven from slabs. We don't uh, give that part uh, as part of our disclosures. Okay. Okay. Fine. I think. Sure. Okay. I think that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hemant, an individual investor. Please go ahead. So thank you for providing me the opportunity, sir. Uh, the first question which I have is, we have basically seen the revenue decline over the past few quarters, maybe two to three quarters. So what is the reason behind the decline in the revenue? And uh, from uh, when we can expect uh, an upswing? So uh, revenue is a function of, again, as I said earlier, it's a function of the overall market volumes. 
uh, to some extent, and to some extent is kind of really an annuity. So, uh, to the extent of the impact of the overall markets have uh, seen, so as and when we see the markets picking up on its volumes in the level of activity, at that point of time, we'll be able to see that. But again, that's a futuristic question, so I'll not be able to give a specific answer. Thank you. And so, the second question is, we have given the split between the uh, uh, annual insured charges of the unlisted and the listed. I think you've mentioned that it is not from unlisted. What do you what is it from the listed company? So I had see our total uh, annual issuer income for the quarter is at 45 crore. Okay, and unlisted income from unis, unlisted is 89 lakhs. So remaining is from listed company. Okay. And sir, uh, just a basic question from my end. So that KYC part which had which we had uh, doing it from a subsidiary. Uh, is it only related to the mutual fund KYC or, or is it across? It will be a basic question to you. Uh, it is, I, I it is across. It is across. Across. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal. An individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, yes, you're audible, sir. Please go ahead. Um, I had a question regarding the EGR. Could you please comment uh, about the EGR revenue that has been? We don't give us uh, product-specific revenue, and it is in the process of uh, it uh, will start going forward. But we don't give any. product specific revenue okay thank you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments over to you sir yeah thank you uh to what one query on the twitter feed i have just got an update from my team i just thought i gave it, that we do a weekly review of all the twitter feeds and uh, whether they have been replied and so far we found basically satisfactorily it has been replied however we will take your feedback on record and we will see if there have been anything which has not been replied to um in terms of overall i would like to Uh, request all of you all to remain safe and sound uh, and continue to uh, be happy shareholders of CDSL thank you thank you on behalf of access capital limited that concludes this conference call thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines